It happened again. Right in the same spot, it broke. Look at this. And it wasn't even cold, it was like 60 degrees out. Hey, if you like what you see so far, please take a second to subscribe and click that notification bell so I can annoy you at least once a week. Man, um, so we had some family over for Easter and I was going to show my nieces and nephews the coaster because they hadn't seen it yet. And literally the second ride shatters the tube. I mean, just completely shatters. So not knowing what, what has happened. Uh, we really had to do something about this because it wasn't cold anymore. That's not why it was failing. So not wanting to be stumped and not wanting other people to get hurt on this, I uh, called up a friend of mine, uh, Jay Stevenson at Plastic Forming Inc. in Fort Worth, Texas, and he was no help at all at first. He said, you know, there's nothing wrong with the material. It should be okay. He told me that what you're doing with the product is not exactly how it should be used, but it shouldn't be having problems like this and he relayed this information to somebody else in the industry and they were kind of stumped too <sighs> so I was pretty defeated uh, but I don't give up on things so I thought about a situation that happened several jobs ago they had uh, airlines run with PVC pipe and I thought, oh, that's a cheap way to do it and then it happened one day a guy driving a forklift accidentally you know ran into it with his load I mean barely tapped it it seemed that pipe went flying everywhere. There were shrapnel like 50 feet across the shop floor. Luckily, nobody got hurt or injured. I think somebody got tagged or something, but it was okay. Uh, but that piece of pipe, about eight foot long, shattered between the two end fittings completely. It looked just like this. So I called Jay back up and I said, hey, what about impact loading? And I told him about the pressurized pipe. And he goes, that's what it is. That's what's happening. And I thought to myself, man, I have one giant continuous impact load on this pipe. Let me show you. So I've got PVC pipe here. This is the old one that broke, you can see right there. And I've got a wheel that is constantly rolling on this thing. So every time it's loading this section, then a second later it's rolling doing this one. And all the time. So I probably between the, the time that it's unloaded and then fully loaded and then loaded again, that one section of track is probably 16th of a second. I mean, this thing's going fast. So yeah, that's a high impact loading. It doesn't seem like it. It's rolling, so it doesn't seem like it's a high impact. But that material loaded and unloaded very quickly. And PVC is just not a good material for this. So I always like to have a sanity check. Uh, so I ran some numbers and I found a calculation called a Hertzian stress or a contact stress calculation. Traditionally this is done with two solid cylinders. So if we had this wheel and this wheel touching and we press them against each other, they're going to deflect and form a small rectangle where they contact. But that's not the case we have. We have a piece of PVC pipe that's hollow, not solid, running perpendicular to the direction of this one. We can't really use that calculation because we're not forming a rectangle when they contact. Uh, another case of this is two spheres. So if I have this sphere and I assume that this is a sphere, well, that gets me closer because when these deflect, I'm going to expect to get a, a circle of some kind. And that's what we get with that contact. If you have two perfect spheres and we try to push them together, we're going to get a circle area of contact between the two. So now we're in the ballpark. We're closer. It's not going to be exact, but it is going to be a lot closer. The purpose of this is to do some relative studies, one material to another. So I started off, we have this wheel, which is a phenolic wheel. Uh, very, very hard. It's a Shore 90D scale, which is very hard on that scale. And I picked these wheels because they will not deform that material as much. And I want that because my roller coaster will go faster if I'm not putting energy into the pipe deflecting and, and undeflecting. I am not wasting as much energy. Uh, however, if I'm breaking PVC pipe, that's not a good situation. So we probably need to go with a softer material. Originally I had on there these polypropylene wheels, which are Shore 90A, which are hard compared to very hard on that Shore scale, um, which I now call these the millennial wheels because they're, they're softer than the phenolic. 
uh, by, by a good amount. Uh, I think that the difference in stiffness is, uh, this is about one third as stiff as this one. All right, so I did the contact stress on each of these and the phenolic on the PVC had a area of about 3 16ths of an inch, 0.188 inches. And that gave us a stress of about 32 KSI, 32,000 PSI that is. When I switch that to the polypropylene wheel, uh, I get an area of about 2.08 inches, a little bit bigger area, but my stress goes down to about 26,000 PSI. So that's a pretty substantial reduction. So Jay also turned me on to using uh, ABS pipe instead of PVC pipe in this case. The ABS is much more ductile and it's about as stiff and it's about as strong. And he's right. So when I switch from the PVC pipe to the ABS pipe, still using the polypropylene wheel, so my area goes up just a little bit to 0.216, but my stress goes down to 2400 PSI. So overall, if I go to ABS and the Millennial wheels, I will have a reduction of about 25% in the, the stress just by making those two things different. 25% is a big deal. That could be the difference between breaking and non-breaking. The other thing is, is the ABS is a much more ductile material, so it's gonna deform a lot better and not just break brittle. So you can see from this chart here that ABS is a much better material when it comes to impact strength than the PVC. So how do we move on from here? How do we make this thing not break again? So the simple thing to do would be replace this section of track, maybe um, six to eight feet, 10 feet, uh, with the ABS plastic and then shift to the millennial wheels, call it a day. Uh, another idea we've been tossing around is, hey, let's, let's change this thing up. Uh, right now it's a launch coaster going up the, um, up an incline, about 30 degrees. What if we made that flat and had the second hill uh, be the first hill and you'd kind of go up over it and it'd probably be an ejector airtime hill. We'd have to run the numbers on it. And then have a, a banked turn, maybe overbanked, maybe even overbanked into a barrel roll going into the rest of the ride. I think we could put all that in there. But I uh, tapped the brakes on that. The kids were just not thrilled with the idea. Uh, while being a good ride, they just told me they're not going to ride it. They're too scared. Uh, they don't want it to break again and actually get stuck upside down or, you know, fall off the track, get hurt. I totally understand that. So we're not going to go that way. I thought it'd be fun to kind of redo the whole thing. If you're out there wanting to build a roller coaster and you look at mine, please do not make a curved drop like this. When you're going down, and you're going through a highly loaded valley, I would recommend it just being straight. Don't, don't be funny and gimmicky like I was. Make it straight, that way you don't have the rocking side to side. Uh, if you're going down straight, you could pretty much load that on two wheels. If you're going down this curve drop, you don't know what's going on, so you can actually put all the load on one side, or even more than all the load on one side if you're pulling up on the other side. And you can see that in this video here, that is what has happened in the past, and I've recorrected it to make it less steep in this area so that it's not rocking back and forth. And it is loading more evenly, but probably still all on one side. So the plan forward here is we're just gonna replace the section track here with the ABS and put the Millennial wheels on, and hopefully we don't have any more problems with this section of track. One final thought is I've actually looked over the rest of the coaster to see if we're actually in this spot and it turns out that everywhere else in the coaster is either very much less loaded and we have some imbalance with the roll or it's highly loaded and we're, we're even on both sides. So I don't think there's any other spots that we need to look at to replace with a year. So if you've made it this far through the video, please give it a like and subscribe and keep you posted on what happens with this and if we have any more problems. Hopefully we don't.